everybody. It's probably come as a, a surprise to those who know me that I'm actually out um, doing a sunset, which is quite rare for me. Um, but there's a, there's a, a reason for this today. I just wanted to test out uh, a theory that I had. I think I mentioned it on one of my previous um, previous videos that uh, twilight of a morning is much richer, pardon me, and darker than twilight and twilight of an evening. And I, I sort of was guessing that it had something to do with um, the amount of dust that settles overnight. Um, but I thought I'd test this today and we'd see if there was any validity in this at all. Um, so we're out here at um, Semaphore Beach and um, what you can see in the in the distance there is Semaphore um, Jetty and I'm just setting this up I'm just going to take a very quick um, shot as it is just a quick test shot uh, just to get my eye in and check out the dynamic range which is huge shooting right into the sun at the minute so that was f22 at 120th of a second and it's not quite um, fast enough I'm probably going to have to bracket this um, but I'm going to test it out and throw on my uh, reverse grad you may be able to see it here so you can see that dark edge and the top bit, edge of it is actually lighter and it gets that dark band there and then it's much lighter, it's clear glass underneath. So you lay this like that on the horizon. So I don't often break this out. I find it a little clunky personally, but just to test it, just to see how it goes. And shooting into the sun isn't ideal, but I do enjoy the silhouettes that you do can capture this way. We're just waiting for that sun to drop a little bit more. I'm not expecting any mad colour today because um, I think there's a thick band of cloud on the far horizon which will snuff out um, this, um, this sun. But just in case I'm wrong and the clouds light up, I'm ready with this uh, composition. It's a plain old simple composition just looking straight down the barrel um, got the jetty coming in from the left ending about on the third on the right and that should just about do us there we go just check this one more time and no doubt the sun is blown out slightly but what do we expect it's the sun we've got a nice little sun star going So that's around a tenth of a second. So okay, if we've got a tenth of a second, it's all right. All right. Yeah, yeah, cool. Go either way. I don't own it. A tenth of a second, if my memory serves, a ten stop is about 140, 150. Um, so I'm going to throw this on, throw it on for two minutes. Now that sun's popped behind, it'll be a bit softer light. As you can see. So let's, uh, let's throw this on now for two minutes. 
There we go. Ah, well, just look. How beautiful is this? Um, the other, I suppose, um, the other added advantage of a two minute exposure is I'm trying to blur um, some of the people that are out on that jetty. But there's quite a few of them just standing around watching the sunset. Um, so I doubt I'm gonna blur a lot of them or, or completely blur them out um, because they're enjoying uh, the sunset. My choice of uh, my choice of lens today is the 32 to 64 and that's really because I wanted to um, step away from the crowds a little bit and to be able to punch in a touch and still capture that, um, that, that um, jetty as a silhouette. And what I could probably do is actually lower this uh, a little bit, and I'll consider that in a moment, uh, just to get some additional clearance between the underside of the jetty and that far, uh, far horizon. Um, I've, I've lined it up so that there is a, a very slim gap, um, but maybe I can adjust that a bit more. Okay, so our test shot is done. And that is, that's very pretty actually, but we can go uh, a touch more than that. Um, so I've got that as my base shot. And I'm going to put that up now to uh, four minutes. So that's a four minute exposure. I'm probably going to increase the light by just dropping down to F14. So just to be clear on the setup here, um, we have on the front of this, um, we have our uh, reverse grad and a 10 stop. Um, we've used the polarizer to take some of the glare off that water. And that's the basic setup that we have here. Right, let's give that another go. There we go. See, there's a very thick bank of cloud over there, so um, I'm positive that we're not going to get anything spectacular today. Uh, but we're going to sit and we're going to we're going to give it our best and just see what what occurs. Colors colors really pretty. The sky is gorgeous. After this, I'll probably shorten the exposure, possibly to around about. 30 seconds to a minute, and I'll attempt to do a panorama. Um, the clouds aren't really moving an awful lot, and I've, I've bedded, seated in the um, tripod legs into the sand firmly, just to prevent any, any real movement. And those clouds are really starting to light up. Um, it might be the last hurrah um, before that sun dips. I'll take off this uh, 10 stop and throw on uh, a three stop. And that should give us uh, a, 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 an exposure time that we can um, quite happily create a panorama. But I think the light is starting to fade. But all the same, what we've got is very pretty indeed. Um, so, yeah, so let's whip out this 10 stop. And it's at one second at F16, one second will give us one minute for the six stop. Right, I'm gonna take one minute exposure and then so I've got the end of the jetty in first and then I'm gonna switch sweep it sweep it just to the left 
and get the rest of it in that way. Um, I think the light's gone, so we're going to be uh, we're going to sit here and wait um, for about half an hour. After that sun's gone down. Normally I'll get the car and it comes out. Uh, <laughs> Yep, so that's the second of our um, horizontal panorama. We'll see how that turns out. Half an hour now since sunset, and so we should be getting into the blue hour ending and into the twilight very soon. Um, there's some interesting sort of texture on the underside of that cloud. Um, I was hoping that that would colour colour up. I don't think it will, um, but it's at least it's catching enough light. You can see how it catches light way way after the sun has set. So it may just, you know, briefly um, flare up for us. And if it does, then we'll be waiting for it. So I'm just adjusting this composition because I don't want the blue sky that's above that cloud. So I'm clipping it there and I'll, it'll probably be a 16 by nine. I'll lose some of the water um, and I'll keep the majority of the cloud. And it's sort of a three-way texture because we've got um, that heavy cloud, that light, uh, the yellowy golden light across the centre. We've got the dark jetty and then we'll have a reflected light that's, uh, that's coming off the water itself. You can see it's lighting. It is, it is still catching light. And we just want that light to pass through enough dust. Um, so that it will take, our, it will, it it will, um, uh, it will lose uh, some of the wavelengths. So that all you're left is the faster light, which is the red light, and uh, and hit the underside of that cloud, and then we can dance for joy. I'm going to um, do a a panorama shot, and so yeah, so we'll do. A, Three second panorama Pepe Jepper image, probably about eight. Because I do like the underside of that, that cloud, it's quite pretty. Um, three seconds, I'm hoping, will just give us enough um, flattening of these waves to make stitching a bit easier. So that's the, that's the plan. The best laid plans of mice and men. So we'll see how we go with this. I'm not zooming into the, um, to the jetty. I really just want that to be um, a suggestion, a dark shape on the horizon, um, rather than uh, make it the full um, object of this image so it's 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 really about the textures and the feel rather than the objects but this uh, this actual cloud is really pretty and goes from well it arcs from horizon to horizon it's uh, it's almost a a bow, a bow shape um, and I think just uh, one more should always do one more than you think. So I will do two. There's a white cloud just to your right. I've just got the edge of that, so I'll fully capture that. And that should 
give me a lost count there you probably know I think it's about eight or so Do a little test shot. There's a 15 seconds of 16. We just see how we're tracking. There's no filters. I have a feeling this is going to be very dark, um, but I just want to see how those lights turn out. Um, I'd rather do that now than do it later on if the cloud turns and we find that we miss everything. That's not. That's not too bad. Enough for the highlights. For the shadows I'm just going to give it a 30 second exposure and see what we get there the water the, the color of the water and the reflected light on the water is actually quite nice oh, but it's that dark band of cloud in the background is exactly where the jetty is so the jetty is sort of wet it's sort of blended into that dark band and there's not much I can really do about that at all that's quite pretty actually. So that's uh, what 30 seconds. I'm gonna throw a three stop on and put it on for four minutes, I think. Because it's uh, it's the onset of nautical twilight. Um, but we've still got a band of colour out there. There we go. Take this, we'll wait a minute. The ghosty, the ghost face. <laughs> Let me just uh, so here's the ghost face. Uh, hi everyone. Um, listen, uh, we're going to call it a day.